the first slide is the easy one, which is welcome everyone uh, to our first community meeting. The reason we're having this meeting tonight is many, many years ago, uh, many of us were working on the uh, Take Back the Boulevard project, which was a project to uh, improve uh, Colorado Boulevard. And the primary thing that the community wanted out of that project was for it to be a safer street, which is something that was accomplished. We also followed a process where we made uh, requests for grants of money to do additional improvements to the boulevard. And we were successful. Uh, we've got $12 million in improvements coming over the next couple of years. Now, one of the questions that was asked repeatedly in the Take Back the Boulevard uh, effort was what about, what about Eagle Rock Boulevard? Because it is our other major street. And the response to it was basically, uh, we really need to do one thing at a time. Well, our efforts on Colorado Boulevard are pretty well done. Uh, the improvements are not done, but our efforts are done. And so it was time to take on Eagle Rock Boulevard. Now, to uh, move an initiative forward, you need several elements. Several elements. One of them is you need money. And so that was one of the first things that we did is we reached out to the community and we asked various entities to uh, support us financially. And I'd like to uh, mention that once again, uh, Council District 14 uh, and our council member, Jose Huiza, was extraordinarily generous in providing us some seed money that really got us going. Occidental College, the Eagle Rock Association, and the uh, Eagle Rock Neighborhood uh, group, Council, and the Eagle Rock Chamber of Commerce. They all anteed up, uh, they opened up their checkbook, and they gave us some funding that is allowing us to go forward, and we really appreciate that. Now, you cannot do what we do with just money. It takes people. Uh, we had a super team to take back the boulevard. I like to think that we have a a super team and an awesome team for Rock the Boulevard. Uh, I chair the group, and I'm going to ask the uh, team members to stand as I mention your name. Please just do away so people will know who is who. Uh, Ashley Atkinson, Brian Bowman, Alan Compton, and uh, Jane Demian, Kathleen Dunlevy, Severin Martinez, and Sean Stocking. These people give their personal time week after week. So let's now the team needs a coach. You need to have a captain. And I think we have hired a consultant uh, who is going to fill that role, uh, Deborah Murphy, right here. Uh, we're so pleased to have her working with us. Okay, I need some technical help. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they jumped to another slide. Jumped to the end. Okay. I don't do. So we're standing in front of the OHP. Okay, so we just forward from that one. Can you just support them? Okay, the last thing that is a critical element is the voice of the community. Uh, no project like this is really uh, worth its salt if you don't have the voice of the community uh, strongly represented. And so I hope tonight that you will uh, not just come to this meeting, but you will stay involved 
in a process, because it isn't just a series of meetings, it's a process that we go through, and your views, your opinions on how the boulevard can be improved are really critical to the success of this. So thank you all for being here tonight, and please stay engaged and attend the remaining meetings. Now I'd like to uh, give it over to uh, Paul Habib, Chief of Staff for CD14, Jose Luizar's office. Thank you, Bob. Um, I want to thank Bob um, for your leadership on this, uh, Tara, and of course every member of the uh, Rock the Boulevard Steering Committee. Uh, it's really exciting for our office uh, to be part of that. On behalf of Councilman Wiesar, uh it's our pleasure to be here again at the beginning of this initiative. Um, you know, we really uh, enjoy these community-driven initiatives because these are the ones that uh, have proven to be uh, so successful because they are driven from the ground up. Um, and then it's our job to try and help implement it. Uh, before I say anything more, I did see, uh, I want to introduce uh, a very special guest here today, uh, a true guiding light here uh, for the over 10 years I've been with the council office, uh, the first lady of, of uh, CD14, uh, also a commissioner on the status of women. I saw um, the, uh, the beauty and often the brains behind our operation, Rochelle Wiesar is here. Rochelle, do you want to stand up? Um, you know, we're here today to start this new Rock the Boulevard initiative, and um, it, it's actually a, a concept uh, that, that's been long overdue. Uh, when the councilman took over in 2005, uh, he brought with him a concept of complete streets, uh, a new kind of type of urban planning uh, to the city, uh, and quite frankly was met with a lot of resistance in the beginning. Uh, at that time, uh, the Department of Transportation and the city knew one way to do things. It was try and get vehicles to move as fast as possible from one end to the other. And that was their main goal. And, and we challenged them and said, no, we want another way. We want us to have safer boulevards. We want them to be active and to be vibrant and have pedestrian accessibility. And, and we've seen that when you do that and you make it more attractive, it, it helps the businesses along those corridors. People you know, feel comfortable going there and walking there. Uh, and that's what we aim to do uh, with Take Back the Boulevard, when that was launched. Um, it creates kind of a new main street for our neighborhood here in Eagle Rock. Um, and that was very successful. I remember being in this very room uh, at the very first uh, strategic planning meeting for that in early 2011 uh, with Bob and Tara, the neighborhood council, collaborative Eagle Rock Be uh, Beautiful, a lot of the, the important community groups here talking about what we're going to do about Colorado Boulevard. Uh, because at that time, Colorado Boulevard was getting known for uh, things we didn't want to be known for. Uh, there was uh, street racing going on in Colorado. There was accidents and actually horrible fatalities. Uh, and after that meeting, I, I remember going back and talking to the councilman about, you know, uh, the group of leadership here in Eagle Rock that wanted to do something. And, and he was so excited and, and committed right away uh, and provided uh, discretionary money right off the bat to help fund a consultant and ha uh, help fund a visioning plan that would, in would have a lot of community meetings so that we could hear directly from the community uh, what we could do to improve that boulevard. Um, and because of that, there was a long process of community meetings, a lot of feedback, uh, a real vision plan was created uh, and then handed to us to, to implement. And, uh, and part of that was taking it from uh, three uh, lanes in each direction down to two lanes. And we did that. And by doing that, it allowed us to meet some DOT requirements that, that now allowed us to do uh, more safety improvements. We put in uh, crosswalks where there hadn't been crosswalks before. We put in those flashing pedestrian lights um, at, at different locations. We put in uh, uh, bike lanes that were you know, a couple of feet separated from the main traffic that made them safer. Uh, and a year later, uh, the Department of Transportation did a study to see the effects. Uh, and initially there was concern that if we did this, we would have, Colorado would grind to a halt and we'd have good luck. And what they found was a year later, uh, the average speed of vehicles on Colorado Boulevard had decreased by only one mile per hour. But accidents had been reduced by over 42%. So it worked. Um, and we've seen it. Uh, and, and from then on, we started talking about, you know, Eagle Rock Boulevard. But we weren't done. Uh, we, we, we implemented phase one as Bob alluded to, and then we went after real uh, funding to do phase two. We secured, with the help of, of, of the community organizations, I mentioned, uh, $12 million to do more. 
And so uh, we're kicking off next year, phase two, on Colorado Boulevard, where we're going to have uh, over 20 curb bump outs. We're going to have uh, two new crosswalks, I believe, uh, oh no, two traffic signals over at La Rota and Hermosa. And we're going to have some uh, additional flashing uh, pedestrian crosswalks uh, over at Glen Iris and right here over at Merton. Uh, so that project's coming to fruition, and it's now time to turn our attention to Rock the Boulevard. Um, and I think we all agree, Eagle Rock Boulevard has as much potential as Colorado, it always has. Uh, and we're really excited to dive in uh, and do this. And once again, the councilman has, uh, has uh, jumped in from the beginning to give the seed money, uh, the discretionary money, to hire a consultant and hire uh, uh, someone can, who can kind of take us through that visiting plan. Uh, we're very excited that the esteemed uh, Deborah Murphy is on board. Her reputation precedes, precedes her. Uh, and we feel very comfortable that once again, we're going to get a plan that we can work with. And, and our ask of you is, is to attend these meetings, throw out every idea. Little, big, doesn't matter. Um, that They're all going to be taken and put into a workable plan. And our commitment is when we have a complete vision plan, we'll do everything we can to implement it, just like we did with the last one. So again, we thank every organization for, for your efforts, but we thank every person here for taking time out to be part of the solution. And hopefully in a year or two, we're sitting here uh, you know, with the groundbreaking of the first real improvements on, on, on uh, Eagle Rock Boulevard. Um, and I can't thank you enough for all your, your help and support. Thank you. Now, as I mentioned a little earlier, we have a, a, a great, I like to think of her as a coach and a team captain, and she's got a great record of winning. Please welcome Deborah Murphy. Thanks, Bob. Now, let me make sure I can get the presentation back up. Let's see. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. I'm Deborah Murphy with Deborah Urban Design Plus Planning. I'm an urban designer and planner and do a lot of grant writing. I've helped cities, public agencies, and nonprofits get over $165 million in grants in the last 10 years. So I'm very proud to help make Los Angeles um, cities um, more walkable, bikeable, and transit friendly. So I'm happy to participate with all of you here in Eagle Rock, one of my favorite neighborhoods. I just live down the way, just straight down the two in, in Silver Lake, so this is a community I come to regularly myself. Okay. Oops. Where did we go now? Sean, don't leave. Oh. <laughs> That's weird. Huh. It's like the slide went blank. Okay. Hmm. Very curious. Okay, I'm going to read from my um, <laughs> cheat sheet on the agenda. Um, so the first thing that we're going to go over in our agenda is the mission and goals, and then we'll review um, our project area, implementation of goals. We're going to review the State of California Active Transportation Program, which is um, a key funding source that can be utilized, um, which was used for Take Back the Boulevard. We're going to review um, concept design timeline, We'll go over just an overview of some toolbox of improvements. We'll talk about some initial observations that we've had and want to hear from all of you on your observations on the boulevard. And then we're going to talk about our next steps. Okay. Something very strange happened. I think if you go yeah, I'm not seeing it. The slides are like not here. Oh, you think so? Sometimes it's a Yeah. Okay. Hmm. It's. Yeah. Okay. It's just a PDF. Okay. Sorry, everybody. Wouldn't be. Uh, 
just like when I was in architecture school, the slide didn't get stuck in the slide carousel. There was something wrong with the presentation. Yeah. I don't see the device. How do we see the device? So you can see a lot of the other projects I've worked on. <laughs> I'll just throw in that one of the most exciting things that's happened recently, um, and a couple of members of my team who are here with me today also worked on this project, Siobhan Burke and then that Berker. Um, we just worked with the City um, Housing Authority on a grant for Watts. Um, it was uh, officially awarded yesterday for $35 million to do a transformative climate communities improvements um, using cap and trade money to build housing and parks and plant 4,000 trees and do a bunch of ped bike improvements and solar panels on roofs, but very exciting. Oh, you opened the PowerPoint. You're supposed to open the PDF. Okay, Sean, magic fingers again. Don't let the rest of us. Okay, oops. And we'll go to control L. Full screen. Yay! Okay. I'm hoping. How are not moving again? Sean? Oh, it's going. It's just super slow. Okay. All right, so I told you about the agenda. We can skip on now. Sorry about the technical <laughs> challenge. Now we got this other funny thing again, Adobe Reader. No. Okay, so the mission statement that was established by um, Tara for Rock the Boulevard will improve and revitalize Eagle Rock Boulevard to make this major corridor through Eagle Rock safe, sustainable, and vibrant. TRB, as um, we will have it be called. Um, we'll develop a plan based on community feedback, while you're all here today, and participation that will stimulate economic growth, make the boulevard more visually appealing, and develop a realm where pedestrians, cyclists, transit riders, and dr drivers can safely coexist. <clears throat> to, uh, so the series of goals that were established on that vision are to create a long-term vision plan for Eagle Rock Boulevard, serve as a template for future development, provide a safe environment for all ages, abilities, and modes of transportation, stimulate economic growth through greater pedestrian activity and walkable design to enhance local businesses, improve community health by lowering emissions and encouraging the use of alternative forms of transportation, including walking and biking, utilize a sustainable approach to stormwater management and landscaping, strengthen and nurture relationships among businesses, residents, visitors along Eagle Rock Boulevard, and recognize the importance of existing historic resources along the boulevard as a valuable contributors to the community's character. So the project area that we're all working on is from York Boulevard to Colorado Boulevard. So it's about 1.1 miles um, of the boulevard. And what are some of the um, roles that the boulevard plays in the commu community? It's an important transportation corridor and connection from downtown LA to northeast and um, links between Hollywood and Pasadena are provided through Eagle Rock. Old historic um, yellow car trolley route um, ran on this street. And then how are we going to make Eagle Rock Boulevard into a place, a destination, and not just the transportation corridor that it has served as for all these years. We want to make sure it's safe for everyone, whether you're walking or biking or riding the bus or driving a car, for kids, seniors, persons with disabilities. And 8 to 80 Street is what we call it. A street that is safe for eight years old and 80 year olds is safe for everyone. So part of that um, location, and we can see that highlighted in the shot up there, highlighted in yellow, is um, this map that shows us some of the major transit corridors throughout um, the Northeast Los Angeles area. And we can see how Eagle Rock is an important link, um, both north, south, along Eagle Rock Boulevard, and then the linkages it makes like with the 780 bus that runs along Colorado Boulevard. And the bike network shown in yellow shows us how this is an important linkage, not just for people who ride around here in Eagle Rock, but for people who might want to go from Los Feliz to Pasadena or whatever. Eagle Rock Boulevard plays an important role 
in the cycling community as well. So I thought I'd um, insert some photographs, and many of you have probably seen these. Um, and I titled this slide, Turning the Corner from Colorado to Eagle Rock Boulevard, because that's exactly what the trolley car is doing here. It's turning off of Colorado and then going to go south on Eagle Rock Boulevard. And this also is referenced to our Take Back the Boulevard and Leading to Rock the Boulevard. Um, here's a shot um, looking north on Eagle Rock at Merton. Um, you can see some familiar uh, buildings there. Here's a shot of that famous uh, yellow car in this nice color photograph at, right here at Yosemite. And you can see the median where um, the trolley used to run that's now been transformed into a landscape median. You can still see those power poles um, that um, were installed back then. And here's a shot looking a little bit further south up where the street curves um, and looking north up to um, the majestic hills beyond. And then this is a shot from the 1950s. I don't know, does anybody remember that there, somebody stuck a merry-go-round in the middle of the intersection? I'd like to know a little bit more about that one. Um, maybe we want to put a merry-go-round back in the intersection. Um, anyway, so how do we implement those goals that have been established by um, Tara and the rest of the community? We need to be able to, as Paul said, find the money to actually build um, the project. So we want to support those mission and goals. And one of those ways is through the state active transportation program. There's also urban greening grants. Um, if Metro comes back out with their call for projects, there'll be local county money to do similar kinds of projects. Um, and we want to make um, the project in concert with the Take Back the Boulevard um, efforts on Colorado. And we're going to be working with the city of Los Angeles um, departments. Um, Kevin Min is here from the Bureau of Street Services. Um, we'll also be working with the uh, Los Angeles Department of Transportation, a key agency um, who um, regulates how we use our roadways and street services. is about how we build out um, our sidewalks and, and other facilities um, that are more public works related. So we want to do this in an effective and timely manner. Um, so I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the active transportation programs since they have a cycle coming up right now for us to apply for a grant this year. It was created by Senate Bill 99 and Assembly Bill 101 to encourage the use of active modes of transportation, such as walking and biking. Really reinforces all of those mission and goals that are already established. Um, the CTC, um, California Transportation Commission, is the one who developed it and is administered by Caltrans. Um, and it's offered every year or every other year, depending. And our Cycle 4 um, program is um, uh, instituted this year. The goals of the program are to increase the portions of the trips by walking and biking, increase safety and mobility, enhance active transportation efforts um, for regional agencies to reduce greenhouse gases, um, as well to enhance public health. Again, a lot of overlap with the mission and goals that have been established here locally. Reduce and reduction of childhood obesity through these programs, but not limited to um, safe routes to school, ensure disadvantaged communities fully share in the benefits of the program, and that's an official designation on the part of the state of California. They have a whole mapping system called Cal Screen, which identifies disadvantaged communities um, and provide a broad spectrum of projects um, for many users. Um, the timeline for this uh, year is that they'll release their guidelines, the final guidelines in May. We've already seen um, the draft guidelines. So they'll be out May 16th, and applications will be due July 31st. So the timing is really ideal for the project as we're starting here at the end of January. Um, then they'll have made their decisions at the end of the year for what projects get recommended for funding and then adopted. So um, as Paul mentioned, um, if we get accepted, I mean, this project, if it was moving right ahead, um, could start construction um, toward the end of 2019. So there's at least $100 million available every year. Um, they haven't determined the exact amount this time. 50% of that money is distributed on a statewide competitive basis. And then there's a sort of a second round that the local uh, planning organizations, in, the, in our case, SCAG, the Southern California Association of Governments, decides on additional projects that can get funded. And then 10% goes to small and rural, which we're not. Um, and 25% of the programs must go to benefit disadvantaged communities, which I'll tell you a little bit more about. And then the funding is available 2019 through 2023. And the disadvantaged community uh, benefit is an important one. And although um, 
the Eagle Rock neighborhood along this boulevard doesn't qualify itself based on the income um, or other conditions within the community. If we can show that disadvantaged community members are being served, whether they're transit riders or kids who go to the schools or employees at the different businesses in the area, we can make um, some alternative um, statements about how we're serving disadvantaged communities. Um, my team and I worked on a project in Culver City, sort of a similar um, kind of income and status neighborhood um, to here in Eagle Rock, and we were able to get them about $5 million to do some pet and bike improvements there. So it's not that only disadvantaged official designated disadvantaged community members can get funding, but we can um, make some strategic um, recommendations. Um, so there's a whole breakdown of the points. I won't go into the details, but they reinforce all of those goals that I mentioned, and we need to make sure we're touching on all of these aspects. So as we work on the design of the project, we'll make sure that we're um, addressing all the issues that are required for us to review in the grant. So to get us there, the process we're going to go through in the next four months is we have our meeting tonight where we're going to kind of give an introduction and have a listening session. Um, we've already planned that our next meeting would be Thursday, March 20th. And Sean, have we determined location yet? It'll either be here or at the Women's Club. Okay, we'll be confirming that in, in the announcement. So I hope all of you did sign up on our sign-in sheet so we can stay in contact with you. And that's also important evidence for our grant application to show the active participation of all of the community members. Our third meeting, oh, at that meeting we'll talk about issues and opportunities and kind of what's the toolbox um, that we can utilize to address um, issues and opportunities um, in the community. Uh, then we'll work on draft conceptual design together at our April meeting, and then at meeting number four in May, we'll have a draft, final draft plan that then we'll work on for the grant application in June and July and submit at the end of July. So I thought I'd show you a couple of projects that we've worked on um, in my office um, and had successful uh, grant applications um, issued. Um, one is for reconnecting Union Station, which is the Los Angeles Street crossing where we helped um, LA Metro get $5.3 million to do some improvements. There, as I mentioned, that Culver City project, we helped them get 2.8. And then um, you should all recognize your own project at Take Back the Boulevard. Um, that $12 million came from two sources, um, part of it from LA Metro and part of it from the Active Transportation Program, which I've just talked about. So this is Los Angeles Street crossing is the aerial photo. So the curved street you see is Los Angeles Street and the street running north-south um, to the top to bottom of the slide is um, Alameda. We're right in front of Union Station. You can see this extra wide um, streets there. Um, and what's on the left is El Pueblo, which is the historic center and birthplace of Los Angeles and the train station right across the street. However, people who are at one or the other don't know the other one's just across the street. So we want to do some serious things to improve those uh, connections. So here's like part of our kind of analysis of that area and identified that project area I mentioned. And then here's just some sketches that we did to show how we were going to do a widened, um, about 70 foot wide pedestrian path um, on the El Pueblo side with a what we call speed table across Alameda Street. So it's a raised crosswalk. Um, that's 40 feet wide to connect between Union Station and El Pueblo. So this was really going to transform by closing down half of Los Angeles Street. We're going to be able to make a major pedestrian plaza and pedestrian connection along with better facilitating the bicycle movements on Los Angeles Street. Here's an aerial view of that um, improvement. Um, this just went through environmental review at LA Metro and would be starting construction in the next about year and a half to two. So this will be a major transformation of a key location that links Union Station with many of the historic cultural neighborhoods, including not just El Pueblo, but how you get over to Civic Center, how you get down to Little Tokyo. Los Angeles Street is one of the key connections there. How do you get down to the Arts District? Um, pretty important. Here's just a sketch we did for some improvements for that uh, Washington Boulevard pedestrian and cyclist safety project on Olinda Street and Washington Boulevard where we put in protected bike lanes. This has um, the bike lanes both on one side of the street because um, Olinda Street um, is more of a collector street so it's very um, 
great facility to add the uh, two-way cycle track on one side. And then your own take back the Boulevard project on Colorado Boulevard. This is some of the sketches from that vision plan and the curb extensions and enhanced uh, high visibility crosswalks and new signals and all the other great things that Paul talked about. So you've got going to be having some great examples right here in your own neighborhood. So I thought I'd just go through a few of um, the things about um, what's in that toolbox. So how do you cross the street safely? How do you walk along, make connections to your neighborhood destinations, but particularly with schools, is a key part of any of the grant programs that we work on. And how do we connect to those important destinations where people shop and eat and get um, around on public transit? Cyclist safety improvements to connect to local and regional destinations. And we want to make sure we address how we make a place out of Eagle Rock Boulevard and not just a throughway. So just threw in some photos of some typical things. We want to make sure we're addressing people-powered transportation, not just um, motor-driven vehicles. Um, how we do high visibility crosswalks, that's what we talk about, those ones with the bold white striped lines, which you have at a number of intersections here on Colorado already, which call better attention to where p pedestrians cross. This was at the dedication um, back of the first Continental Crosswalk downtown Los Angeles at Fifth and Spring. Um, with curb extensions, again, that's a similar idea of what you're looking for on your project on Col uh, Colorado. Um, how can we do, make some people places? This is out on Reseda Boulevard um, in Canoga Park, how they're putting out some furniture um, on this wide sidewalk to accommodate people just taking a rest as they're shopping in the area or having a cup of coffee. And they put in a bunch of uh, buffered bike lanes out there, so there's a little, that's part of the Great Streets project. Um, other places to sit. This is some of those people street projects where they've widened the sidewalk by the use of um, the pedestrian plaza out in what was a parking lane, similar to what's on York Boulevard um, in Highland Park. Um, how can we make bus stops into a lovely place so that we can encourage people to take public transportation? You can make them into a bus stop garden and not just a place to wait for the bus. How might we think about addressing uh, stormwater management by installing bioswales um, along the street to create a buffer between um, moving traffic and pedestrians as well um, deal with stormwater runoff. Um, are buffered bike lanes something that might be appropriate for the street? Um, are parking protected uh, bike lanes? Again, this is just part of those toolboxes that we'll go over much more extensively and want to share any of the ideas that all of you have for what could be for your street. I thought I'd throw in these couple of pictures. This is from um, Bogota, Colombia. Um, they're, um, they do these pedestrian bike esplanades where um, cyclists are up at the sidewalk level along with uh, the pedestrians. People are very well behaved on their bikes and um, travel at a speed that is appropriate. And then like the woman here who's in her um, electric wheelchair with her dog, um, is riding in the in the bike lane. So it's a very um, mixed uh, flow of traffic. This is something that we're also proposing for a street in downtown Los Angeles on Alameda um, that Metro will be working on doing a similar kind of esplanade. So there's lots of solutions. Um, so some of the observations that we've been making and then we'll hear um, from you on your observations as well. We want to look at a street design that balances all of those users and how we allocate street space so that we can make sure we accommodate everyone. We want to make sure that things are safe and convenient, that we provide beauty and placemaking, and that there's some great memory to the street and that we add value um, to your community. So we were, did a nice walk the other day to really um, take a look at the street and know about some of its conditions. And so it's, I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that we think it's a pretty wide street. And that was um, something that was helping to accommodate the trolley car running down the middle of it. But um, it does have kind of excessively wide lanes. and um, But that wide street also affords you some pretty spectacular views if you're looking north um, up to the mountains. So we want to make sure we're thinking about the scenic qualities of the street along with the landscape median um, that's out there now. Some of the parts of the median have um, landscaping and trees and other parts um, are kind of underplanted and need some refurbishment. It's an important um, transportation corridor both for people to get 
around in cars, but also on the bus, um, what connections are made um, along the boulevard and then to the boulevard. Um, also, as I mentioned before, important cyclist connections um, are provided. Um, however, there's some long distances between crossings for pedestrians, and that can be up to a quarter of a mile. So we've actually you know, taken a look at a map of the street where the crossings are currently allowed at safe crossings because it is a very wide boulevard. Um, it's very challenging for pedestrians to cross at unsignalized intersection. So um, we have up to almost a quarter of a mile um, between Avenue 45 and Westdale. So that's a very long distance to ask someone to go out of their way to cross the street. So it'll be something we'll want to make sure that we take a look at. Um, we have lots of driveways. Um, so that's a very challenging uh, situation for pedestrians walking along the street to constantly have that cross traffic of people pulling into driveways as well, um, the sloping uh, driveways. I just want to go back one second to show on this slide too. We also um, observed, and I'm sure many of you do, the offset um, intersection of um, streets so that we don't have the alignment and particularly for pedestrians that's very challenging as well as the flow of traffic at those misaligned intersections where Merton um, on the east side doesn't align with Merton on the west of Eagle Rock Boulevard or many of those other streets and then some of the ones um, where there's the left turning <laughs> devices um, kind of conflicting and cars coming at each other so this is safety issues all around. Um, Pretty good, most of the places have a 10 foot sidewalk. That's um, manageable, it's not ideal for a really active street. And there are other sections um, like this one that have about 15 foot wide sidewalks. So we'll wanna be looking at, again, not how you just cross the street, but what is it like to walk along the street. And we notice there's only a sporadic planting of trees and that many of those trees are underscaled for the scale of the boulevard. When you've got you know this 130 foot wide right away you've got um, a lot of area where you could have a large canopy of trees and the scale of these trees doesn't match that um, scale of the street. We have a lot of damaged and poor quality sidewalks that need to be repaired and fixed up along with looking at the width of those sidewalks and then where um, there are parkways or other stormwater management tools. And then the other thing that we recognize um, is uh, speeding drivers. Again with those long distances between traffic signals and wide lanes um, it leads to that speeding, which then can also lead to the crashes. So we have mapped, um, and just kind of an overview for you. This doesn't show um, which ones are at which level of severity, but you can see the concentration of uh, crashes between cars and cars to pedestrians and cars to cyclists. So we can see lots of car crashes at York. Um, we see uh, some bike and car at Avenue 45. Um, we can see some of the pedestrian things at Westdale and at Ridgeview. And then as we go up to Norwalk and Addison, um, and then we see more of them up at Colorado, there's a number of pedestrian crashes there. So we'll go into more detail on all this because this is a key part um, where the um, active transportation program will be asking us to um, do design and countermeasures to address um, these specific uh, conditions that have crash situations in the last four years. Um, we did notice that there's lots of schools and religious institutions in the area, so the comings and goings of students as they're arriving at school and their safety is really key and important as well as the high activity um, at different religious services at the different facilities is a key thing that we want to make sure that we're paying attention to. Um, we have lots of auto-related businesses um, along the street and how does that activity um, balance out with the pedestrian oriented uses and those churches and the schools and, and all of that. Um, it's not that this plan will address the um, auto-related businesses but how might we do things that help keep better control of, of the uses and making sure that um, those businesses aren't parking vehicles on sidewalks and some of the other challenges that happen. And then we do have the power lines. Um, that's more of an observation um, along the street, um, but it's something we would need to make sure we're um, thoughtfully addressing when we select street trees. 
along the boulevard because there are limitations um, with the power companies about that. Um, and this is a picture on Eagle Rock Boulevard um, of a storm event back in the 1920s, but it reminds us, given all the things we've heard recently about, you know, places that are at the, at the base of foothills, about the issues related to um, stormwater management and how might the des redesign of the street address um, stormwater management um, opportunities. So we'd like to hear from all of you. What are the things that you feel about your boulevard? What does the street mean to you? Is there anything about its history that you want to share? What's your experience walking on the street, crossing the street? Have you biked on the boulevard? Or why don't you bike on the boulevard? Have you taken public transportation uh, um, along the street or trying to get to Eagle Rock Boulevard? What are the uses along the street that you um, actively um, do business with? And what would Rock the Boulevard um, do for you? What, what would uh, make it work for you? And is there another street in Los Angeles or a different part of California or the United States or around the world that you'd like Eagle Rock Boulevard to be like? So I'm going to uh, get the mic here, and Sean is going to come around. And you just put up your hand, and Sean will come and see you. And then we're going to get some great note-taking going on up here by Ms. Ashley Atkinson, treasurer of Terra. Um, so, who wants to go first? Come on, I know there's lots of ideas out here. We'll start right here. Just wait for me to call on you, right here in the green shirt, and state your name, and then um, any of those questions you'd like to answer. Real quickly, I know in the 4700 block of Eagle Rock Boulevard, uh, we had a tree that died, and it was with uh, termites. Then I asked the council office to see if we could replant. But along down New York Boulevard, you're going to notice that they were not allowed to plant any trees because of the power lines. Well, you can't plant trees. They just have to be the right size and type. So that is, like I mentioned, something we have to coordinate with the Department of Water and Power. And placement to proximity to power poles. Yes. Okay, right here in the orange shirt. Please state your name. Hi, my name. My name is Seth. And I want to refer to the map that you put up. Oh, sure. Here, very Can dangerous uh, intersections. You want this map or the previous one? No, that map. That okay. map is good. Uh, the intersection of Avenue 46 and Eagle Rock Boulevard, because many, many people will take Avenue 46 from York, and mm -hmm. it's and then if you're coming down on York, coming south on Eagle Rock, and you want to make a left to Eagle Rock to Avenue 46, it's really hard to see pedestrians. It's just, I'm not surprised that there aren't more red dots over there. Very dangerous intersection. And then the other one is the one I called you about. Uh, on York Boulevard on, and Eagle Rock Boulevard, there's that little island there. Yes. And, and if cars are smart enough to go, oh, I can make a right onto Eagle Rock by jetting around, but most are not. And then it's such a long street to cross that if somebody's making a right turn, nobody gets through that intersection yeah. because you're waiting for the pedestrians and then maybe one person makes a right turn and everybody's backed up. Yeah. So there's definitely some vehicle movement issues to be considered as well in the flow of traffic. Yeah, we notice that ourselves. Thank you for that point. Next. Please stand up so everybody can hear you. Thanks. I bike on the street and it moves really fast in traffic and so parking is affected by things would be nice so that we're not too close to the fast moving traffic and it would be nice to remember on sidewalk because then we would be so close to the traffic. Could you repeat the last thing? I couldn't put the mic a little closer. Oh, Thank you. Okay, state your name and stand up. Okay, I have it. Uh, Sean probably knows this, but we actually had an issue with um, a crosswalk by the Chipotle, which is just south of Colorado, because of the trolley lines. And apparently, there's some limitation in the federal law, like some federal issue, about removing the trolley lines and then actually trying to place a crosswalk over it. And as a result, that project was stalled and I believe it's been killed. So I just make sure that you're probably aware of that. So that, so that it slows down or it's not going to happen at all. That crosswalk is Merton, part of Take Back the Boulevard, and the train tracks get delayed. Okay, in the back. Okay, Hi, my name is Jonathan. 
Um, I think in addition to crosswalks like that just being installed, they should also be lit at the median. Um, all up and down Eagle Rock Boulevard, there's street lights at either end of the street, I'm sorry, at uh, either end of the crosswalk, but there's nothing at the median, and drivers going up and down the boulevard at high speed can't see anybody waiting across the second half of the crosswalk. So, something that should be considered. Excellent. Hi. Um, so, I'm Jeff Hall. I live in Eagle Rock. Oh, sorry. My name is Nathan Cero, and um, I live in Eagle Rock, and I work in downtown LA. And it's either North Figueroa or Eagle Rock Boulevard that I take to get to work. And the one thing that stands out about Eagle Rock Boulevard is that as it's currently designed right now, the bike lanes are in car doors, and it's. I mean, I've compared it to you know. If you've ever wanted to throw an excitement of riding your bike on the freeway, just go down Eagle Rock Boulevard. Um, I think there's more than enough room for this to be a protected bike lane, which means that the, there's either a barrier or a line of parked cars. Um, I, I was here and I was vocal about supporting the bike lanes in Colorado, and I understood some of the limitations we had as far as how many lanes and the widths and LED is also trying to accommodate other considerations. Like now that there's more room in the medians for cars to kind of stay, and, and you know, so they, they don't have to cross both sides of the, of the street at the same time. LED was great about measuring out all the concerns about Colorado. Eagle Rock Boulevard has so much more room, and I think it would be a great place to really. Uh, set good precedent in Los Angeles as far as having good for that Okay, what he was talking about is in this image here for people who don't know about those designs. Got it, some good ideas out here. Or just comments or... Hi. Uh, Hi. Okay, I wondered... Um, can I put the... Are you hear me okay? All right. Same, 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 same. Yeah. Oh, same, I'm, Bill, I'm Bill Henriksen. I, I'm, uh, All right, Bill, thanks. I'm with the Boulevard Sentinel here in town, and I wanted to know, um, is, it, is it always necessary to put the bike, I understand the biking, I think it's good for health and whatever, but I, I'm just wondering if it's healthier to put it, the bike lanes on other streets than the most busy streets. And is that a consideration or is it not a consideration? We can look at those issues and we have to know is there a parallel route that is not too far away so that people can still get to the businesses and destinations along the boulevard in addition to serving the more regional thing where they could go you know a couple miles before you know reconnecting with the street okay thank you so we'll take a look at all the ideas yeah. Hi, I'm Jane. Um, so I, I've um, had the experience. Uh, if you can stand up and help. Thank you. Know, I just said about um, needing more protection on the bike lanes. I I I, I bike there um, in a different in different contexts. One is um, Eagle Rock Boulevard is a major thoroughfare. It's like a highway for bikes, you know, to get from um, points that are very far away. So it, it it's nice to accommodate those bikers. But I've also biked there with my younger son. Yeah. Um, who was confident on a bike, and um, but you know just a little bit um, wavering, and he found it very exciting because the cars were going very fast, like you know it was a sense of danger. But I, that's that's not okay, <laughs> you know. So I feel like um, you know we want to make it safe for all ages um, to bike on in all levels of biking. And um, having raised two kids in this community, I also know that. Um, between the two schools, the high school and the elementary, that, that whole complex of schools near the elementary, um, people, uh, it, it would be nice for kids to be able to cross the street and go to the um, shopping center where there's a lot of food options, and they do do that. You know, but we can make it safer for them to do that. That would be really nice, which is a lot safer. You know, but we wouldn't have to worry that our kids were just crossing the street to go get food. You know, that would be so nice to, just to be able to cross it. Uh, casually and safely. Um, the other thing is we take a lot of walks at night and we end up crossing Eagle Rock Boulevard uh, late at night. And um, so there's this experience where you're completely invisible to, to drivers and you have to wait for the break in um, traffic and then you like go across and then you end up perched 
um, on this tiny, tiny island, um, you know, waiting for the next group of cars from the other direction to see. So I feel like a lot can be improved there, um, especially at night time. Another thing is, um, I, um, I know that we have um, resources on how water used to flow down um, Ikawa Boulevard to York Boulevard and, um, you know, a, a long, long time ago and, and um, kind of originating along Argus and, I mean, there, there's a lot of information on this. And I think that um, in terms of placemaking, um, the opportunity to tie in storm, um, stormwater um, management with um, local history and um, uh, that's a really nice opportunity along this boulevard, especially as you get to the boulevard. Lots of good ideas. Thank you. So, my name is Alshia. Um, this is on to the discussion about the bike lanes. I was wondering if it's an option to somehow incorporate like a landscaped bike path and walking path into the media. Um, I used to live in the valley and the orange line bus line kind of runs down uh, along the bike path and walking path that we used to walk your dogs and walk the dogs. And it was kind of a pleasant experience and I was wondering since that medium used to be used for the poly line and people uh, use that as an expanded pedestrian path. You can look at all kinds of options. Absolutely. Uh, Mike, okay. Hi, I'm Becky. Um, I wanted to also just raise the consideration of how could we potentially help to with the flow and tra of traffic and where there are um, a lot of stalls and, and streets that get backed up, such as Yosemite going west from all the drop-offs at the schools. Um, we're looking at having a devoted left turn signal so that traffic doesn't get so backed up and cars aren't. Um, there's a lot of issue with pedestrians crossing the, um, along uh, crossing Colorado or Eagle Rock Boulevard at Yosemite, but issues with cars who are trying to make a left turn to get down, going downtown. So I think we need to look at some of the streets there where you do have a lot of um, school exiting traffic and looking at traffic um, improvements as well as all these other things. Absolutely. That's all part of it because um, we want it, when it's safer for everybody who's driving, it's also safer for people that are walking, biking. So this is and Department of Transportation will be involved and your input and your local knowledge of those situations are really valuable along with the kind of traffic studies um, that they conduct. So thank you. Everybody should try to speak up as much as they can. So are any of the kids still here? I'd love to hear from any of the kids in the room. <laughs> We're all kids. Um, I was interested in maybe seeing some greater connection to the gold line. Maybe the wayfinding or I don't know what other last, you know, last mile connection ideas there could be. on Eagle Walk Boulevard. There's a street that goes directly in front of it. There's a light there. I don't know if it's out of sync or if there's a sensor, but when we frequent some of the restaurants on Eagle Walk Boulevard, we go down that street to make a left onto Eagle Walk Boulevard and go home. That light never changes. I mean, I hate to admit this, but we've had to turn on a red light because it never changes. So just get somebody out of here. Check us off. Check us off. Check us off. 
Other ideas or comments or concerns? Up here at the front. Oh, go ahead. Okay, there are two witnesses, Jane. Stand up, please, Jane. <laughs> There are two issues. We're talking about um, the time it takes to cross the street, also the time it takes for a signal to change. As I was walking on Needle Rock Boulevard, I wanted to cross at Avenue 45. And I swear, I was waiting five minutes for that light to change. I could have just crossed the street without the signal changing, and it would have been very dangerous if I had done that. The other issue is um, at Ridgeview. I live on Ridgeview, which is Avenue 46, Needle Rock Boulevard, at Ridgeview. That intersection is horrific, and it really needs a signal because there's so many near misses and near fatalities there in that intersection. So. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Oh. We'll come back, Jim. No problem. Uh, not so much a particular comment, but just a, a, an aspiration. Yes. Perhaps going to ask New York, because especially as someone who drives to downtown frequently, you know, lot backs up. Um, what we're doing over to it is it's terrible thing. Without solving that part of Eagle Rock Boulevard, you're really missing out on a big chunk of it. And I know that's not technically Eagle Rock, but it's yeah, Yes, it's yes, uh, yes. But hopefully that's definitely incorporated somehow. One of the challenges is the limitation on the dollar amount that we can ask for a grant for and kind of bigger projects become more challenging to get funded. So uh, that was the strategy of trying to look at like a one mile section is a very sort of manageable one in terms of the grant process, but those are things that we should make sure we talk about at our next session and kind of map those out and talk about those issues. So appreciate you bringing them up. Uh, Jim, up here in front, Sean. Thank you. I'm Jim. Um, I'd like to uh, underline the point that was previously made about institutional uses that are immediately off the boulevard. So you've got Occidental College at Westdale, you've got the Eagle Rock Elementary School at Fairview, and you have Solheim Lutheran Home uh, on Merton, uh, which has been here since 1924. Um, so all of those will have an impact on the traffic studies. Uh, we know from our own traffic studies at the college that Westdale is essentially our front door. Um, this is probably stating the obvious, but because Eagle Rock Boulevard was a streetcar street parking, I'm sure it will be an issue just as it was up on uh, Colorado Boulevard. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, signage can be addressed in some way. There's already a sign for Occidental but if you're looking for Solheim Lutheran Home or you're looking for the elementary school, it would be nice to have some boulevard signage that made those local landmarks easier to find. Absolutely, those are all fundable um, elements. In the back. This is Jamie again. I have another point, but I, I also, um, because I live closer to New York Boulevard, um, I, I echo um, the, the need the, that, that it would be really incredible to have some improvements extend out of the and, and And not indefinitely, actually, I think that there's a really nice opportunity. Um, the, the reason Eagle Rock Boulevard is so good for bikes is it brings people from the steering down the LA River bike path, from which you can go everywhere, right? So the, the turn off, the, 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 the place where bikers turn is under 36. So it's, it's actually only a little bit past the world. And that's so that's a, a huge. Um, um, that's that's really the, the most important part for bikers, I I think. Um, and I think it also reaches into these communities that are really underserved. So uh, I think there's um, that uh, extending it down to Avenue 36 um, would really broaden the the um, constituency to benefit from. Okay, take a look at those issues. My name is Seth, and I also want to add on to that because also with all of those of those condos and those there's a million condos and apartments being built now between York and El and El Paso. So all of like just when those new uh, townhouses went up by the two north entrance out of the freeway, which also slowed traffic down because you used to be able to get on the other side of the bike lane to make a right onto the two freeway. You can't do that anymore. So we have all of this uh, new residential uh, homes happening 
And that's all. And I think we need to think about that because things are so slow now, it's going to be just at a standstill when those are, when those are all occupied. I thought I'd make things narrow again. Uh, I, I tend to keep track of different pedestrian and uh, bike infrastructure projects going on. In 2021, there's going to be a bridge uh, that's going to go across the river and it's going to bridge between uh, basically Frog Town, Richmond Valley, and Cypress Park. Uh, that bridge is going to connect to a new green space that's basically kind of at the bottom of where Eagle Rock Boulevard turns into Cypress and it kind of dips down and touches into San Fernando. Uh, for a lot of people who are riding from Eagle Rock or Highland Park into downtown LA, that actually makes a much more functional route into downtown because instead of going across Cypress, we can actually get off of these major streets, go through some green space, go over a bridge, and you know, anytime you can make space uh, available to bike riders or we don't have to keep track of the ticket on the really fast. Uh, so a lot of these improvements, you know, we're taking a mile here and all there, but these all are gonna add together. They're gonna make a really functional network. Uh, so I'm all in favor, I know there's reasons why we can't go past this work, but I'm all in favor of doing so. I also wanted to mention the fact that uh, there's always concern about increased traffic whenever we have additional units and areas being built and uh, whenever we're trying to address concerns about uh, schools. I live on basically, I don't live on East 70, but I live practically on East 70, and I'm sandwiched in between uh, the Rockdale traffic and the uh, New York uh, high school traffic. And my solution is that my car has two wheels and a pedal. Um, so I also want to make, I also want to put out there that making an alternative for for people to get out of their cars is also a way to look at the concerns of increased car traffic. Right? Just because you yourself may not have the option, still being able to make other people have the option, get other people out of their cars, you yourself can. Um, I think that's a, a good way of also looking at some of the concerns. Great, thanks for bringing up that bridge. Um, my, our team uh, worked on that project a couple of years ago with LA Metro and the uh, Bureau of Engineering, so we're very aware of it. This is making um, an important point that there might be an opportunity to look at bike facilities and a, a longer um, project area than the pedestrian improvements. So we could kind of have two parts. Um, more mileage of bike facility and and a limited area for the pedestrian ones. That's something that Tara um, would need to review and, and make a decision on and consultation with um, the city. Other ideas and questions? Yes, in the back. Thanks. Hi, um, my name is Martha, and my comment comes mostly uh, as a resident and as a pedestrian. Uh, I live in the Bay Area, as we all know, the summers are only getting hotter. And so I would also like to echo, as in your presentation, you mentioned about having unbalanced landscaping throughout um, New York Boulevard. So just having some really beautiful lush trees that are also drought tolerant, that don't destroy the sidewalks, and um, also provides a shade that's needed as, you know, just to kind of bring people more out as the weather gets more beautiful and more pleasant. So. Right. It helps us deal with the greenhouse gas reduction because we're creating oxygen with those trees, so it helps meet the goals of the ATP program. And we all noticed that when we took our walk last week, it was pretty, pretty hot. Hi, my name is Andrea. Um, I wanted to make one comment about the, uh, the bus stops along Eagle Rock Boulevard. Um, there's, at the corner of Eagle Rock and Cypress, there was a recent um, improvement to one of the bus stops there. It looks really nice. Um, I think just facilities that encourage people to use, you know, bus transportation as well. I know that's in your uh, PowerPoint, but I really like that idea. And uh, maybe bus lanes. Uh, just not forgetting the importance of bus infrastructure as well. Wonderful. Thank you. I am Jamie. Um, I'm just wondering, I'm really learning a lot about all the experience you've read and what you've covered and thought of 
and along with everybody else's comments, I'm just wondering, as part of the public forum, there's always people that work here, and I'm just wondering, in your experience, if there's anything that hasn't been brought up that you've heard of from people that aren't able to come to the meetings, or maybe are different kinds of pedestrians, or they have different mobility issues, and does that make sense? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So when we were out on a walk the other day, um, we recognized that there's some members of the blind community that are here and what are their needs. Um, so we want to make sure that we're addressing and uh, the deaf community. So we want to um, make sure that there's audible, we can look at audible signal um, opportunities and other things for visually impaired persons. So um, as we're all aging as well, there's mobility challenges. Um, a lot of the, as we just talked about the sidewalks, but there's a lack of ADA compliant ramps at intersections. Um, we have a lot of um, issues to be addressing here. Um, so thank you for your point there. We'll also, um, as you mentioned, that people who aren't here, part of what we're going to be developing is an online survey monkey uh, tool where we'll have a series of questions. So people who can't regularly get out to meetings because of uh, conflicts or um, whatever other reasons will be able to um, answer questions and give their input in that way. So if you have any ideas for that, please share them. Go ahead, Molly. Uh, is there any way to have, I don't know, uh, maybe print copies of that? Because I think sometimes some of the same people yeah, no, we wanted people that don't yeah. have access to internet or computers exactly. or, or yep. different languages. And I know you've thought of all that. I'm just asking in case it's not. No, absolutely. Please, please ask all of those questions Thank here. You. We want to make sure everything is accessible in, in, in all uh, languages and um, abilities. Thanks. Hi, my name is Bara, and uh, I'd like you to consider some California native plants to uh, plant on your floor to attract more native uh, insects and birds and bees. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Um, and trees are such an efficient way to cool um, our, our um, city. So I, I wonder if this is not a great opportunity, but why are we limited in the size of trees? Is it because of those power lines? Is it something that we should be considering to um, put the power lines underground or something so that we can make trees that are the scale of, of what would really... It just costs a lot of money and it's not something that the ATP program could... Um, pay for um, is the undergrading of utilities. Um, one of the challenges is, because we have a public utility in the city of Los Angeles, Department of Water and Power, they're not required as are all private utilities to set aside money every year to underground utilities. So we have, we're kind of have this burden longer than, than most communities, because they, I don't know, it used to cost like a million dollars a mile. I'm sure now it's probably, you know, three million dollars a mile to underground utilities and Eagle Rock Boulevard has particularly, you know, very high tension um, wires running along it. So maybe we can ask DWP to get involved and look at some opportunities um, through what other funding sources they might have. But we have that limitation on a lot of other streets, and it's been quite a challenge. But we have to address, we want to cool the street, but we have to recognize the existence of those power poles. In the back? Yeah. Uh, Tom, I'm uh, one other thing. I'll occasionally take a bus downtown rather than making my way to the gold line over town park. And the 28 is constantly late um, for a sort of variety of reasons. But I think one thing that would help both from a pedestrian and auto safety perspective, as well as improving transit times, is a lot of the bus stops on Eagle Rock Boulevard are near side bus stops, and they can be moved to far side bus stops. It would increase pedestrian visibility. It would help make the bus, you know, be on time a little more often. Um, and just kind of just generally improve throughput throughout the door. Cars wouldn't have to wait as long behind the bus, you know, to make the right turn. So I think that little change, which is pretty expensive, and Metro is making moves to do anyway right now for the system, would be great to think back onto this, um, you know, just including the Rock Bowl Park, you know, and it could impact a lot of different facets of this project. Great idea is we can invite Metro to get involved and um, the stops and zones group at LADOT um, can take a look at those ideas. Thanks. Other folks? Anybody that you know who's not here tonight, who you know might have some issues or hear things you've heard about, um, their challenges using the street? Hi. Um, I just want to say, Karen, I'm sorry, I was here inside the door. 
Um, I want to say that right now the bike facilities on Emerald Boulevard, they're for cyclists. And Mobility 2035 uh, has protected bike lanes on Emerald Boulevard. And that makes the bicycle facility okay for families and people who aren't comfortable riding in traffic. And I really hope that protected bicycle facilities are being considered so that kids and moms grocery shopping and regular people can ride in bike lanes instead of just cyclists. Thanks. Uh, well, that's some really good ideas. And we're going to continue to talk about ideas um, at our next meeting. And as I said, we're going to develop an online and a paper um, version of a survey that we'll be distributing. So we're going to be listening to all of the input that you've given us today. We're going to be talking to the Bureau of Street Services, to the Department of Transportation, to the Board of Terra, to come up with um, a whole kind of toolbox of ideas um, and what we can utilize in kind of a design charrette type of setting to help develop the concept um, for Eagle Rock Boulevard. Because we want to really, you know, rock Eagle Rock um, and create um, a wonderful street for all of you and for all of us in Los Angeles. So um, let me go to the end here and I'll remind everybody of the schedule. Oops, too far. So our next meeting will be on March the 20th um, and it's going to be likely at the Women's Club. You'll be getting that announcement. We'll, as I mentioned, talk about issues and opportunities. So bring your ideas. Um, again, bring some pictures if you have something or um, other streets that you like um, around Los Angeles or other places. Um, we'll be talking about that toolbox of possible improvements and not uh, yet to be determined date in April. We'll have our third meeting where we'll develop a little bit more about our concept design, look at um, alternatives if necessary. In May, we'll finalize um, our draft design so that in June and July, our team can work on the grant application. Um, but we'll be looking for all of you to help us with letters of support um, because those are critical parts of what we need um, to have a successful grant application that shows uh, community-based support for the project. Um, please make sure that you're notifying your friends and colleagues, people at the various schools, if you know some of the business owners um, along Eagle Rock Boulevard, um, anybody who's participating in any of the preschools and other schools along the street or elementary school and, and students at Occidental. We'd like um, all kinds of people to be sharing and giving their opinions. People from um, the deaf community in the area would be really valuable to hear from. So that didn't sound very good, I'm sorry. Um, anyway, um, so we really are excited that all of you are here and want to participate in making um, a great Eagle Rock uh, Boulevard. So thanks so much. Um, and we'll all hear, um, there's displays of the boards. If you have other uh, questions or things that you didn't want to share with the whole audience, we'd be happy to take down your notes. So we'll see all of you on March the 20th. And thanks for coming.